Hi friends, if you are tuning in, you are here for our Friday morning story time live with the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County. My name is Noelle Nicholas. I am a gallery interpreter at the museum and I will be with you for about 15 minutes as we read a book together about an animal that you can find in Los Angeles and many other parts of the world. Our book this week is about an animal that is found in many, many parts of the world, both, both the Eastern and Western hemispheres. And it's an animal that is particularly busy right now. And they are busy right now because of this plant. Does anyone recognize this? Does this look familiar? Aha! This is an acorn, and an acorn is this section right here. It is a seed. It is the seed of an oak tree. And there are many different types of oak trees all around the world, but all of them produce these acorns. And these acorns only show up on oak trees one time of year. And that time of year is right now. It is oak season, my friends. Uh, acorn season, oopsies. It's always oak season. They're beautiful trees all over the world. <laughs> but these acorns are really incredible. They show up, they sprout on oak trees between about early August to early November, which is right now. And the trees are covered with them. They are a very important food source for many different types of animals, mammals and birds and insects, all sorts of things. And the animal that we are gonna read about today is particularly fond of them. Do we have any idea what type of animal might be very, very busy eating acorns right now? I'm, there are many. There are many different types of animals eating acorns right now. But the one that we're gonna read about today is squirrels. I love squirrels. I grew up in Honolulu where there are no squirrels. So coming here to the continent of North America has been really exciting for me because I think squirrels are so cute and I am just so happy to live amongst them now. <laughs> so squirrels are an incredible animal that live just like oak trees all over the world, both in the Eastern and the Western hemisphere. And they are mammals just like us. And Acorns are one of their most favorite food sources and also one of their most important food sources. Now this book is awesome because it tells us all about squirrel behavior, meaning how they act. And no matter what type of squirrel it is, the behaviors in this book are behaviors that they all share. So they are things that you will see a squirrel doing in your area no matter where you're tuning in from today. And there are scientists who study animals like squirrels and they are called biologists. We have biologists who work at our museum and particularly we have biologists who study urban creatures like the squirrels that live here in Los Angeles and they study their behavior to see how these animals have learned to live amongst humans. Now the squirrel on the cover here is the squirrel you're probably going to see the most often in Los Angeles. It is called the Eastern Fox Squirrel. They are those very bushy-tailed, reddish-brown squirrels that you see scampering all over Los Angeles. And as their name suggests, they are not native to Los Angeles. They are native to the eastern coast of North America. So they were brought here to the west coast of North America by humans in the 19th century. And since then, they have spread far and wide, and they have made Los Angeles their home. They have found ways to live among us, especially here in Los Angeles. But we do also have some other native squirrels here in California. The Western gray squirrel is a very silvery gray squirrel that is a bit more picky about where it likes to live. As we have taken more land for our human habitat, this squirrel has moved farther out into the forests and the more natural parts of our state, but they are still here and they are still thriving. We do also have ground squirrels that like to live in the sandier, hillier, more mountainous regions of the state and they do not climb trees like these fox squirrels. They live, like their name suggests, on the ground. So we're gonna learn about a few different types of squirrels today and all about the behaviors you might observe them doing in your neighborhood. Here we go. Look at that, the 
entire inside of our book is acorns. Squirrels Leap, Squirrels Sleep by April Pulisayer, illustrated by Steve Jenkins. Squirrels wrestle, squirrels leap, squirrels climb, and squirrels sleep. Do you do any of these things? Wrestle and play, jump, climb, sleep? I do. I think because we are mammals and squirrels are mammals, we probably have a few of the same behaviors. Meet the squirrels. Gray, fox, red, flying squirrel overhead. These are the two we see the most often here in Southern California, but red squirrels and flying squirrels that use big sacks of skin to glide through the air are common in other parts of the world. Tail, umbrella, tail as flag, tail for balance, zig and zag. A squirrel's tail is very important. They use their tail to cover their head if it's raining, to stay warm and dry. They use their tail as a communication device. So just like us waving hello, a squirrel might flick its tail hello at another squirrel but they can also use this tail to flick very rapidly as a warning to other squirrels or even as a communication to a nearby animal saying, excuse me, please back up. I don't like you getting this close to me. I've definitely had a squirrel flick its tail at me. <laughs> they also use their tail for balance. They can move it to the right or the left as they walk across very thin walkways like thin branches or especially in urban environments across power lines. Has anyone ever seen a squirrel walk across a power line? I have a power line just off my balcony in front of where I'm sitting today and I see them walk across like tightrope walkers all the time and their tails help them to balance while they do that. And we've got a little turkey friend here too. <laughs> Nose for sniffing, jaws to chew, eyes for looking, Back at you. Squirrels have great senses and they use a lot of the same senses that we do. They use their nose for sniffing out food. They use their strong jaws and teeth for chewing through their food, which can be very tough, just like our acorn nuts, right? And they have big eyes that help them to spot danger, but also to spot their food. Have you ever had a squirrel stare back at you? I know I have. Pause for climbing. Pause to pick. Pause for cleaning. Pause, run, quick. Paws are used a lot like our hands with squirrels. They use their paws to climb. They use their paws to hold their food while they're eating it. We do that too, right? They use their paws to clean themselves. We do that too. And they use their paws to run. Can you see what is chasing our squirrel here? It is a big bird of prey. Meat eating birds like owls and hawks and falcons do find squirrels to be a very good food source. So they need to run quick. <laughs> squirrels chirp. Squirrels drink. Can you guess what squirrels think? Squirrels do have voices too. They make sounds that sound like chirps. And these chirps are used for communication, for warning. And also they will sometimes chirp at people who get a bit too close to them. It's pretty incredible. They sound kind of like high pitched squeaks. They also drink water. Just like us, squirrels need water to survive. And as far as what they think, well, I think studying their behavior like an Biologists can really help us to try to figure out what they're thinking. And we have a gopher friend here too. Squirrels reach. Squirrels rest in a tree hole or a nest. That squirrel is amazing. It's holding onto the tree just by its feet and reaching out to get those acorns. 
But squirrels like us also need to rest after working so hard to collect all those acorns. And they like to rest in cozy, warm places, just like us. They tend to do that in the holes that you'll find inside of trees, or sometimes they build nests. Squirrel nests are called drays, and drays are made of sticks and leaves and grasses and mosses. They are round and they tend to build them right in the crook of a tree branch where it reaches the trunk. So if you ever look up and see a very big bundle of leaves and sticks that looks like it was made by something, it's likely not a bird. It's likely a squirrel home. Squirrels gather, squirrels store. How many seeds? More, more, more. Squirrels are gathering up those acorns. They gather acorns to eat immediately because they're hungry every day, but they also do something called caching. And caching is storing their food for later. They will dig little holes, bury the acorns, cover them up, and remember where their food is stored. It's kind of like us taking home food from the grocery store and putting it in our pantry to eat later. We gather our food, we bring it somewhere where we can get to it, and we eat it when we need it. They do the same thing with their acorns. Pretty exciting. Squirrels stretch. Squirrels yawn. Oh, munch the acorns. Are they gone? They're eating acorns. Are they eating them all at once? Are they gone? Aha. Remember we talked about how they cache their acorns? They store them underground. What time of year is it now? There's snow on the ground. There are no leaves on the trees. It looks like winter. And one of the main reasons a squirrel needs to gather those acorns and bury them for later is because eventually there's no more acorns on the trees for them to eat each day. They have to gather their food for winter when it's a little harder to find food. Now they bury them underground and they usually remember where they buried them, but sometimes they forget. And acorns after all are seeds. Five are hidden. Will they sprout? What do you think? Will these acorns sprout? There are one, two, three, four, five acorns underground. I noticed that this one in the middle is a bit different. It has a hole in it. I wonder if all of them will sprout or if maybe only this one will sprout. Aha, seedlings push up, up and out. A seedling is a baby plant that has just sprouted out of a seed. We can see an oak seedling here. It's a baby tree. I see roots coming out of one, two, three, and four of these acorns. But the one with the hole in the middle hasn't sprouted. That's so interesting. You know, the acorns that get forgotten underground when squirrels bury them will often grow into oak trees. But if they've been chewed on already by something, they usually won't sprout, but that's okay because they can still be a good food source for lots of other animals. Trunks grow upward, trunks grow wide. Squirrels circle, squirrels hide. Has anyone ever seen two squirrels chasing each other around the trunk of a tree? I know I have. They are very active, playful, and social animals. They do interact with one another. They will even cozy up and sleep together inside of a dray. And this squirrel's hiding. Can you still see it? I still can too. That tail is sticking out. <laughs> squirrels wrestle, squirrels leap, squirrels climb, and squirrels sleep. Do we see how cozy that squirrel looks all tucked inside of that squirrel dray? That looks very nice. My friends, that is the end of our book, Squirrels Leap, Squirrels Sleep. We learned a lot about squirrel behavior, and these are the types of things that you can see 
around your neighborhood if you happen to spot a squirrel. You can do science anytime, all of us can, just like an urban biologist, by observing what behavior that squirrel is doing. You can write it down in a nature journal. And if you're interested in logging your data, your sightings of animals like squirrels, you can always use the app called iNaturalist that we partner with at the museum. With the help of a grown up, you can take pictures of animals that you see and upload them into the app for scientists like our urban biologists to take advantage of when they are doing science too. You can be a scientist with them and help them to collect data because they can't be everywhere all at once. But if we all pull our observations of nature together, we can learn a lot more about animals like squirrels. I also have one more suggestion of a great experiment that you can do during acorn season. If you happen to have any oak trees in your area, see if you can find them with the help of an adult. They should be covered with acorns right now. And if you collect a handful of acorns and take them home, when you pop them in water, some of them will sink to the bottom of the water and some of them will float. The ones that sink are viable, so that means that they will sprout into a seedling if they get a chance. The ones that float will not sprout, but they can still be good food sources for animals like birds and insects and mammals. So if you do your experiment, any of the acorns you collect that do sink to the bottom could potentially be planted by you and a grown up somewhere in your neighborhood that you think could use a tree. I hope you had fun learning about squirrels and acorn season with me today. And I hope you have a fantastic weekend, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us again for NHMLA's Storytime Live. Bye-bye.